everybody, Stephen Key here, and guess what? I've got someone that knows a lot about the toy industry, and what's really amazing, uh, this gentleman, Bob, Bob, how do you pronounce your last name? Reginus. Reginus. Bob is a former director of electronics at Hasbro. Is that correct? That's correct. I spent 13 years there. And what's amazing, he's going to share with us what it's like when a new idea comes in to the company and what happens behind the scenes so you can understand how you can maybe submit your idea a little differently to make sure it does get approved and maybe some things that you can do um, to just help it along because your experience, because you see a lot of, when you're at Hasbro, a lot of ideas that came in uh, they need a little help. Is that correct? That is correct. Most electronic items that come in, people don't know the type of uh, electronics that are used in the toy industry. Okay. There's a large number of companies, mainly in Taiwan, that produce chips, microprocessors and stuff that are specifically made for toys and consumer electronics. Okay. Well, let's start at the very beginning. All right. So here goes, everybody. You're going to really love this. All right. So I'm in the toy industry. Now, I think this could apply to a lot of industries. That's why I think this is really nice to talk about this particular one. I'm a, I'm a toy inventor. I come up with this great new toy invention. I'm excited about it. I think Hasbro is the perfect company. And I send them a cell sheet, maybe a working prototype. It looks great. It goes into their world. They see it. They like it. What happens next, Bob? Uh, the company, the inventor relations people will send the information about the product to the different groups, whether it be electronics, mechanical. There's a costing group that can measure the weight and everything and figure out the manufacturing costs, labor. Mechanical people will look at the mechanism and say whether it's uh, producible. And electronics will take a look at the electronic design. Most of the time, if you're using a Raspberry Pi processor to control your prototype, the People that are, it's given to are engineers who are working on products and who are working on stuff that has already been approved and is heading to market. So when they get these products in, the inventor relations people will send them a schematic. So they will take the schematic and cost it out. So if it's a Raspberry Pi processor that costs $1.20, they put that in. They don't say, oh, this might be able to use an uh, alpha microelectronics or a bit microprocessor that cost six cents or okay. 10 cents or the so, micros in the industry go down to three and a half cents and up. Okay. So, so as an inventor, I send it in. I'm pretty excited about it. They get back to me. They want to do a little bit more evaluation. They send it to an engineer such as yourself and you get it. And you're busy, aren't you, Bob? I mean, you're doing other stuff, right? Yes. Engineers' jobs are to get items that are already approved for production into production. Uh, I've been a consultant for coming up to 15 years. I do a lot of consulting work for R&D people in Hasbro because the engineers at Hasbro don't have the time even to support the R&D people, so they usually go out to outside okay. uh, groups to build their prototypes for them to do the electronics, okay. to do the mechanical design. All right, so I'm you were there for 14 years at Hasbro, an idea comes to you, you look at it, you're really busy, and so they want you to do a, a they want you to cost it. So you told me recently that sometimes you just take it and just send it off because you don't have time to re-engineer it for manufacturing. Is that correct? That's correct. We would just cost out what was presented. 
same thing even if they sent it to the China, uh, the Hong Kong office or China office at Hasbro. Those engineers are even busier than the engineers in the U.S. and because they're dealing with the factories and everything, and it's the same thing there. If they ask uh, for a cost, they will cost exactly what is given them. So companies that get stuff in are companies that either know the electronics and the toy industry, and even if they use a different processor, can give a schematic to the inventor relations people saying what chips can okay. perform the product. So instead of the dollar twenty, they put in a cost of six cents. So wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about that because if you don't know, and if you don't reach out, let's say you don't have experience, or you don't reach out to someone like yourself. All right, we'll talk about that at the very end. That it's going to come back way too expensive, and then what happens when that happens? It's the it, the inventor relations people will tell the person uh, we're passing on it because of the cost, and that's all you get told. They don't tell you how much it costs or anything, and so it's the inventor's job to figure out how to cost reduce the item. Now. That makes perfect sense, right? I mean, I'm an inventor, I'm very creative, but maybe I don't have a manufacturing background. And I know a lot of people that are listening to this, they're saying, they're scratching their head, they're going, you know, I don't know anything about manufacturing. So what can they do? How can someone like you or somebody else help them understand that? Because I know when you first get started in every industry, you don't know anything about manufacturing. Everything, you have to simplify your ideas, simplify your design. Uh, I've taken many, many products apart. I've seen items that I go, how did they ever get this item to sell for this cost? And you need to look if it's uh, a clamshell with electronics in it, so if it's over cost, it's the electronic design. There's, like I said, many chip companies in Taiwan that produce stuff just for the toy industry okay. that have everything built in. If you open up a talking toy, you'll see a tiny board with a little black dot, two wires going to the speaker, two wires going to the battery, uh, to the speaker to and if it's a button, two wires going to the button, and there might be a capacitor on it. Okay. So the chip that they are using directly drives the speaker. Uh, it also have two wires going to an LED. That chip can but, directly drive an LED. It. But Bob, I'm just saying. I, 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 I'm new at this, and I don't understand this. So can I hire someone like you to help me? Is there are, are there yes. freelance? Electrical or mechanical? I mean, do I need one or the other or both? It totally depends on your item. If you have a complex mechanism, you need both. Uh, or someone who has experience in both. I've done a lot of mechanical stuff, but I always bring in the people I work with are ex-Hasbro people who have retired and stuff. But it is best to get both right. and different people work some of the people freelancers always want a fee others will work and partner with the inventor so okay so let's let's see if we can kind of bring this together if you don't know some of the components it could be it could be electrical it could be mechanical and you send an idea in and they, they drop it or they send it back to someone like yourself, an in-house engineer that's so busy that just sends exactly what you have. And there's a very good chance if you don't know that information about manufacturing, it's going to come back too expensive and it's going to not get accepted. So you should hire someone like you, a freelancer that has experience, that can help 
submit that idea along with maybe a spec sheet? Is that important? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, a schematic showing and bill, a bill of materials showing what can perform the functions because the engineers don't usually get the prototype. They're sent a schematic and the description. So they go and they cost it or they're given the electronic PC board and okay. said told to cost it. So they look, they don't know uh, all the functions, what it does. So it's used in a 32 bit processor. They assume, okay, it needs a, 32-bit microprocessor. Can it okay. run off an 8-bit microprocessor or a 16-bit or a 4-bit? That's okay. big thing in the toy industry is 4-bit microprocessors. So when someone hires someone like you, and we're, we're going to put your information down below so people can reach you, are you expensive? <laughs> I, If you look at my LinkedIn uh profile, I have a little quote at the bottom saying, I work for the toy companies to pay my bills, and I work with inventors to pay, play the lottery. Uh, it's most inventors that I know uh, can't afford. I've worked for some of the big inventor houses before they got all that. They brought in electrical engineers in-house, okay. and so those companies would pay me. Okay. But uh, most inventors, uh, I, we figure out a way for me to help them out. And okay. if the product succeeds, then I get paid. Got it. Well, Bob, I want to thank you very much for coming on and, and pulling back the curtain on what's really happening. Because I think this information you provided, I think you can look at all industries now and apply the same same thought process and if you yeah, could it's consumer electronics is uh okay. anything i don't help people out who are doing medical systems <laughs> but consumer electronics is the same type of components there's okay. components made specifically for those industries whether it be microwaves or right. other or different items all right so having some manufacturing background is a pretty big plus, I would say. Yes. Okay. Bob, thank you very much for coming on. Like I said, we're going to put all the information down below. It looks like you've had a fantastic career at Hasbro, and you're still in the industry helping so many. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day.